let's have a lesson and discussion on this work. Uh, follow the lesson for free and just pick up some tips and some ideas about this style of music. But if you're interested, I do have a sheet music edition of this work, and there's a link for that in the description. So um, this number seven and num this is number eight. Um, I also did uh, number seven previously, so you can check out both. I would say this one is this one's a little bit more significant. You know, it's it's got the A major section and A minor section, and and the capo. So you you just get a little bit more out of the piece. I would also say the you know in this particular work, I would say the operatic composer comes out more. So he was very popular as an operatic composer um, and I think in this particular work you have some real singing melodies and you have some like little characters that happen and lots of drama all over and so I think I think you're seeing a lot of that in this piece and um, I would say that this is one of the definitely the better pieces in the whole collection um, it's just uh, it has a lot and it works quite well on the guitar so um, yeah, it's just it just has so much to offer, so it's really great. I would say the main thing to do here is to just kind of kind of work out your your characters a little bit, and work out um, what you're what you're doing with the music, um, just just a little bit, and then as you um, as you keep time, you can switch modes and 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 represent those characters and those articulations as you need to. I think sometimes like if you just play through it without too much thought of that um it can be more bland than it is it's like it it can be uh this piece can be very interesting but you you do have to make sure you're you're making it that way so that first melody um of course just really singing dolce kind of sound to it and then you can decide how intense you want to be about that bass rhythm you know, I'm not detaching too much just because um, I just I find it a little bit distracting uh, on occasion and brings too much attention to it. But so I'm kind of trying to just keep the character relatively calm. But you could go quite differently. You could detach that quite a bit. would work quite well with those chords. You know, you could articulate those too. I again play them out. I play them relatively like sustained, but you could detach them quite a bit. It's tough to do like the um, sforzando and fortissimo and go right to piano with those chords. It's just that the three note chords that follow it. You have to really like turn off the pressure in the right hand. I find like that kind of quick change um, is sometimes when when there's chords involved is sometimes a little bit tricky in the right hand so you'll just have to practice like really uh, stop relax stop relax and then try to reduce it and do it in time ah. so yeah just something to, to work on there and then the melody returns, of course, at, at measure 20 there. Um, you could do all of those by going You don't have to use three, four, but I find it's just a little bit smoother. It's a little too fast not to to utilize the full hand shape, so you can quickly just same thing um, earlier on in the piece too, right? Then you go into the A minor section, 
And there's no good way to finger this in the left hand. Um, I found you have to jump four around because you really need to keep three and one down on the A minor chord. You know, it just, it works with three down for so long that uh, not using fourth finger is, is, wouldn't make sense. Especially here, it's annoying though, because you have to jump four over while you're sustaining the C. But you know, there's enough sustain happening that I think it's not too noticeable, so I think you can get away with it. If you use different fingers, you could do something like something weird, which I, I almost wanted to do, but I didn't want to put it in an addition for everyone. You could go three, four, three, that three cramming in though is pretty weird and it's not usually done. But then you have to switch to three here anyway. So I think just using the fourth finger is better. I do, instead of using four, three, I do use three, two, because you can slide it right into that shape. And then octaves. Just uh, practice that slowly, there's not much to say about it. I think the fingering that I've that I used there and wrote down on the score is, is the most optimal anyway. This is a pretty open-ended little grace note thing, or a little cadenza. I, so I do a, a, um, an accelerando, uh, just so. It took me a while to kind of like figure out how I wanted to do that. And then you start again. That fourth finger. And then it's to couple, so you go back to the beginning and play without repeats to the fine. Um, yeah, so like you know, the piece is is pretty great because it's it's definitely intermediate maybe late intermediate, but intermediate for sure. Um, but it has um, quite quite a bit of scope and lots of opportunity to create good articulation and, and interesting characters and have some flair later and there's some challenging parts in it. So it, it's, it's, like, it's, an, it's like an advanced work, but it, it's definitely at the intermediate level. Um, but you know, maybe later intermediate. It depends on, on your tempo and, and what you're doing with it. So really great pieces. Uh, I'm really happy I found both of them. I think they go together nicely as a pair. And um, and I hope people play them a lot more. It's a, I'm surprised I don't hear these pieces way more often because by a reputable composer, they have nice themes and melodies, nice um, mix in the composition, so lots to do. Um, they should be played more often.